Hey guys, Mark Carew here. In this video we're going to go through and show you how to cut out some standardized plates for the open rail gantry systems. You can see here I've made up some 3D models with some gantry plates that are adjustable. You'll be able to move the V-wheels in and out on these plates if you want to use them on smaller, uh, smaller profiles. So we're just going to go through and just show you how using Sketchicam which is a SketchUp plugin that was created for as a cam solution for SketchUp. Uh, you can see the window here, it's not fully showing up on the screen, but this is basically it. It gives you some options to set up your machine, um, to set up your cuts, and you can download this if you go over to the platform or you can go to SketchCam.com. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, get rid of the the 3D model, 3D models that we have here, and even if it just means to hide, I'm just going to go through and do a view. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to go to camera parallel projection. I'm just going to select the 3D models and right click on them and hide them. So we're left with just the plates. These plates are uh, components and they're exact copies of the plates that are on the 3D models. Actually, let me undo that and that I'll show you if I select one. It corresponds to the actual 3D model so you can see that they're related to each other. Any changes made on this plate will show up on the copy below it. So I always do that when I'm in my workflow so I have a I just have two separate areas where I can work without being crowded with the wheels and the, the rail system. Um, if I have to go through here and and do x-ray mode you can see that it would be complicated to try to work on this object so I bring it out here and I can work on it by itself so let me undo that circle that I just did okay let's go back to uh, top view make sure cameras in parallel projection it is get rid of or not get rid of uh, hide these and now we have the plates. Now we need to think about the material size that we're going to be cutting these out of. I will be using eighth inch Garlite, which is a phenolic type resin board. And if I go to the sketchy cam dialog, you can set up your your sizing right here. Now another thing is you can set up for millimeters or you can set up for inches. I'm going to go through because my board is, uh, the board I'll be using the cut out of will be one foot by two foot, let's say. So I'm going to go to Windows, Model Info, and we'll go down to Units, switch this over to Inches, and that's fine. Hit OK. I don't know if I hit OK or not. You don't have to hit OK, you just have to click out of it. Alright, now we can load up the sketch cam parameters. You can see everything is in the in decimal format now. So we got a feed rate of 100, plunge rate of, uh, I'm going to slow that down to 80 and 80 for the plunge rate. And we'll be using uh, material thickness is going to be 0.125 oops, or eighth inch. This inside outside overcut percentage is how far you want it to go through the material. Um, some of the guys like to leave like an onion skin, so they might put 98% here and then go back and, and recut it uh, one last pass. But I'm going to go ahead and put like 130. I don't mind if it cuts into the spoiler board. Uh, if I'm going to be using the flat printer, I'll just be cutting into a carrier piece of foam anyway. So that'll be fine. For our bit, we're going to be using a 1 8 bit. I have to double check my hole sizes, but I believe we can use this. Um, tab width. Uh, these are the bridges that hold the part in place. Uh, we call them tabs, and they're 50%, and they're a uh, quarter inch wide. That's pretty wide. I'm going to make these an eighth. Uh, save Z travel. How high you want the Z to go up above the material when it moves to the next, when the bit moves to the next uh, hole or next cut. So 0.125 would be good for that. Okay, so here's where we set up our, our safe cutting area. So I'm going to say 12 by 24 here. 
and we're using an overhead gantry style machine. We also, since we're using Garlite, we're going to do, uh, it's very hard material, we're going to use a multi-pass and we might put in a multi-pass of uh, 0 0.0625 for a sixteenth of an inch. Now you don't have to type the decimal format, you could just type 1 16th like that and you can even use the inch symbol. This is just habit, I like doing it that way. The rest of this generate uh, 3D code is, is for um, 3D so you don't have to worry about that. The step over is also for 3D and for the comment and remark section you could put in open rail. This will show up oops. This will show up in the in the text over at the top of the code um, plates. So once you hit OK, everything is kind of saved, and you can see that it put our material here as a dotted line. This is our safe cutting area now. So all the plates that we want to cut have to fit within this uh, range here. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to go through here and oops. I'm going to select these and move these out of the way. So I always like to leave a copy somewhere out of the way that I can work with because if I have to go back to them. Um, because these we actually need to explode. Right now they're components so we're just going to explode them. And then I'm going to flatten them. So if you select them all you can go to... Uh, you can't see that. Let's try that again. Select all these, right click on them and go down here to flat edge. And you still can't see it, but if you go down it's flattened selected edges. And it'll go through and if you give it a minute it'll go through and push these down onto the zero plane. And you can see it, it assigns a face. And they're they're basically ready to go. Now these little inserts here these are just center marks, so we don't have to worry about those. Okay, so I'm just going to double click on this uh, larger plate and I'm going to bring it over, holding down the, or clicking on control. Bring it over into the safe cutting area. You can see here we're in the line, looks good. And you'll notice since I only double clicked, it brought it over without all the center points, which we no longer need. So I can actually triple click on that, or double click on it, and I can right click on it again, get a flat edge, flatten selected edges, whoops, let's try this again, flat edge, flatten selected edges, and then you have to wait a second, and there we go, it applies a face to all the holes and puts every, make sure that everything is zeroed. So I'm going to try to go through here and fit as many of the plates on here as I can. Let's do that real quick. Kind of nest them together. And the Garlite is really nice material. Now you could use, of course you could use plexiglass, you could use uh, or some type of an acrylic, whatever you're comfortable with cutting on your uh, CNC mills. You'll need at least one full set of these. All right. Yeah, we'll be good here. I, actually, this is good because I want to make it a couple of these guys. These little guys. You know what? I don't have to copy them like that. I can go through. Once I assign the cut code, I can go through and, uh, and do it that way. So, I think I could have, you know what? I could have triple clicked on this and taken the whole thing without the, without the center points. So, sorry about that. Let me go through and... Uh, Right click, flatten edge, flatten selected edges, and let that process. All right, so we have all our, our faces are flattened now. Everything is ready to be assigned the cut code to. And using the Sketchy Cam toolbar up here, you can go through and assign all your cut lines, whether they're um, center line cuts, inside, outside cuts, etc. And you can read more about the sketchy cam toolbar under the help file here let's see this is actually the help over here so we're going to go through i'm going to assign all the inside holes first so i can go through and basically just click on every hole so let's go through and assign all these all these hole cutouts first 
Okay, so you can see we have all of our holes assigned. So you can also see that it, it calculates automatically for the offset of the bit. The next thing we need to do is go over and assign the outside cut lines. And you'll see as you hover over it, it automatically assigns the offset. We're using an eighth inch bit, so this is a sixteenth be between this gap here. And you just hover over it, you click on it, let it process, and it should turn those lines orange. Okay, that's done. Now we'll go through and assign our bridges. Now, I was thinking I would put just a couple bridges on each one, um, maybe maybe top and bottom, and this will help keep the part stabilized while it's on the machine. You could add these as big as you want. Even though you assign these bridges in the parameters dialog, you can actually hold your mouse button down and draw a giant one if you wanted to. And I could go through, I can click on the eraser tool, the arrows up and down, sorry, right and left, to filter out exactly what I want to use the eraser tool for, and for instance, the tabs. So this way, it doesn't erase anything underneath, or any line I don't want it to erase. Let's get back to the tab tool and finish these off. And once we have all of our lines assigned and we're ready as far as generating the g-code goes for this we have some space up here that we could fill in with some other other parts so I can just control copy these and bring them over I can almost fit this above here but it's going to be too close to that edge so let's bring it over here and I may get one more of these guys I think that would work. Now you could play around with this and nest this even better, but this is what I, I came up with so far, just for this example. Now I'm going to go through, we have our master copy here. That's all I really need right now. I don't need these anymore, so I'm just going to delete those. Let me edit unhide all, and I'm just going to get these out of the way. Make sure if you selected anything, you deselect it. Anything you don't want moved. So I'm just going to move that up. And this is what it looks like right now when we're about to assign this. Using this command here, or this icon here, we'll go ahead and assign it to a G code. But before I do that, I'm going to save it. So just go to File, Save, or Save As if you want to rename it. And then we'll click on the G-code button. And you can see here we have it set up to save as an open rail standard plates. So we'll save that. And get, takes a, a minute, let it process. You should get a window that pops up. I'll put file store, yada yada, looks good. Now there's another plugin you can download for SketchUp that allow you to view that code that you just created. It's called Plot G-Code. We click on that one. It'll take the last G-Code file that you just... Uh, process through the flat script and it will bring it bring it up in the uh, fashion where you can actually see the g-code over here on the left hand side um, you can also see all of our parameters are set in here even our open rail plates which we put in the comment section and then it goes through and, and uh, has created the g-code now you can pan this around and you can also rotate which is really helpful because you want to be able to look and make sure that everything is set up the way you have it the way you're, you're trying to set it up you can see our tabs here I can already see that there's a problem because th this was supposed to generate a multi-pass and it didn't so I gotta see what's going on with that okay this is where it got mixed up we forgot to check generate multi-pass hit OK I'm just going to save this now to make sure it saves those functions. I'm going to go and save the G-code now right over top of the old one. Okay. Go to plugins, plot the G-code. Take a look at it. Now if we look at it, you can see we have several passes to get through the eighth inch material. Three in total. The last pass is just the overshoot pass because we assigned it over 100% of the material thickness. 
So it's going to do a sixteenth and a sixteenth and then a little bit more. So everything looks good there. You can see our bridges here. It's going to leave these open so we can go back and later cut those out. It ensures our parts are nice and safe. They're not going to move around while we're cutting them. And that looks good. So at this point we can go cut this on our mill. If your mill doesn't accept the .cnc file extension. Actually let me bring that up. I brought up the open rail standard plates uh, code.cnc file here. It's just in a notepad. You can see all the G code here. You can check it out if you want. But if, you're, if your machine doesn't accept the .cnc file, you can actually save when you go to save out in uh, SketchUp under the Sketchy Cam. You can actually go through and save it out any way that you want. You could actually rename this. It could be .tap for instance or whatever. But either way, if you want to go back and do it later, you can always resave this text file as a .tap and it'll it'll work just fine. So that's basically the setup. Now I'll just go out to the mill. I'll run that .cnc file and it will cut it out, which would be awesome. I hope this has been informative and hope it helps you to start making your own customized gantry plates and systems for the open rail linear bearing system. Thanks for watching.